Hello, it's David again with Ural Motorcycles. Hey, I want to do a follow-up video to the last one I did on checking fluid levels. There was a couple of points that I neglected to speak about and I wanted to correct that this time. So we'll do that and then I wanted to shout out to Terry and Mike on Facebook who were two of the first people to comment on the last video uh, that they wanted to see where the Zerg fittings were on the bikes. So we'll be getting to that too. And then going forward, if there's any topics that we can cover for you, just uh, leave us a note in the comments and we will get to them as time permits. So to start off this time, uh, we're gonna go back to the gearbox um, and talk about the little bolt behind the filler neck where the dipstick goes in. In the last video, I was showing you the dipstick right here and how to check the level, but I neglected to mention this little bolt back here. Now, if you see on this one, it says do not remove. There's a little sticker there. Sometimes these can get washed away, torn off, or on the older bikes, they didn't even have that. So I stole this from our mechanic so I could show you an inside look. So there's that bolt in question, just like right there. That's where it is. So if you peer inside, you can see that that bolt is actually used to keep tension on this double tail spring that goes to the shifting crank that's attached to the shift shaft and the shift quadrant. So if you were to back that out, what it does is it releases the tension that it holds on the spring when it's activated. We're talking costly repairs they basically have to go into the gearbox and set that all back up again. So that's why I wanted to point it out so you didn't make that mistake. Because on the on some of the early import bikes, well even still today, uh, a lot of times there'll be a bolt similar to that that's actually a viewing window to make sure that your gearbox or motor oil is at the right level. And that's not true on, on your old motorcycles. So do not remove that bolt. So in the last video, when I was talking about the fluid levels and the funnel drive, I neglected to stress the importance of um, maintaining the proper fluid levels that are recommended in your owner's manual. You go over them at all, and uh, what's going to happen is, uh, we were talking about the dipstick last time, but the little vent tube uh, right here, what will happen is the pressure buildup of the oil and the air in there with the heat as the ring and pinion is going around it's going to try and evacuate any excess oil and it's all going to come out here or it's going to get pushed out the seal and you may think that you have a bigger problem than you actually do when it's just pushing out oil that it can't contain within the case in the old days um, the dipstick was also the breather but <laughs> It's actually right there in the same general area as the ring and pinion, and it was flinging oil right onto the breather. You would get this misty little donut ring around the area, and you know it was always a mess. So uh, over the years and a lot of study, real-world study and testing to see what was going on uh, with the way the oil flowed in there on the ring and pinion, they relocated the breather up here and made this a solid dipstick. Um, one wheel drive is very similar, just a smaller case. Get the dipstick here, breather here. So that's why it's imperative to keep the proper levels. You, you get it too full and it's going to try and push out somewhere. Now, if you live in an extreme environment like the southwest in the summertime and the ambient temperature is really high and you're pushing it down the freeway at a good clip, even at the proper fluid levels, you may get a little bit pushing out because you're really building up pressure in there with the heat generated from the ring and pinion. So um, we actually sell a kit. The part number is 50813. Uh, I apologize, I don't know what the, what the retail price is, but you can contact your dealer uh, to get that information. But what it does is it replaces the, um, the breather with this, you can take this breather out and it is replaced with this little barb fitting that is the same thread pitch goes into the case <coughs> that attaches to the little hose. The little hose gets uh, zip tied up to the frame rail 
and then on top of it, you got this nifty little breather. Now, uh, what that does is it keeps everything above the level of the, um, the fluid in the final drive. So any of that misty air that's being evacuated out up the tube when the bike is at rest, it's just going to run back down inside. So to conclude this video, I would like to address a question that was brought up by Terry and Mike on Facebook. And if I'm understanding your question correctly, you were curious about the greasable U-joints where the Zerg fittings were on the bike. So on a one-wheel drive, you're only going to have the one on the main uh, drive shaft from the gearbox to the final drive. There's a little tiny U-joint in there, and uh, I can show you what it looks like. Uh, bring this thing back again to show you. So um, on the uh, on the yoke, there's a little Zerg fitting right here on this little tiny uh, U-joint. Now that's pretty hard to get to with a standard grease gun like this or even the bigger ones because the tip is too big. So what we use around here is uh, a little guy like this. It's got the pointy tip and you can actually put this right on the Zerk, push down, and then fill it with some grease. Now, over the years, um, the other two, which are here on this U-joint and here on this U-joint, on two-wheel drive only for the sidecar drive shaft, uh, you, it was a mixed bag. You could have got uh, a U-joint where the Zerg fitting was on the, the cap, or sometimes it was between the cross. It all depended on uh, where we were sourcing the U-joints at the time. So back in 2015, this was standardized, and everything 2015 and newer, or if it's been an older bike that's been replaced recently, um, it's probably gonna have the Zerg fitting on the cap, which is really pretty simple. You just, uh, Spin it around until the Zerk fitting is exposed, squirt, squirt, and then you spin it around and fill that one until you hear the telltale signs of the cap starting to squish the grease, and then you know you, you're pretty much full. If you have any, any other uh, suggestions or comments for, for short topics that we can cover, uh, please leave that in the comments below. If you like these videos and you'd like us to keep doing them, definitely uh, give us a like or let us know in the comments as well. Um, it's a real simple way for us to have a direct dialogue with our customers. And uh, if you appreciate it, like I said, let us know. And we'll, we'll keep doing it as time permits. So uh, I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll talk to you again.